What's up, everybody? This is your boy Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA 220 1001 examination. So let's get into it. In this video, you will learn about client side virtualization concepts such as the purpose of virtual machines, resource requirements, emulator requirements, security requirements, network requirements, and hypervisors. Let's talk about virtualization. So what is virtualization? So in computing, virtualization refers to the act of creating a virtual rather than actual version of something, including virtual computer hardware platforms, storage devices, and computer network resources. Virtualization allows for standalone computers to run multiple operating systems at the same time while using the same hardware resources. Virtualization involves understanding three primary concepts. You have what is called the Virtual Machine Manager or the VMM. A VMM, which is also known as a hypervisor, is computer software, firmware, or hardware that creates and runs virtual machines. It is a specialized operating system that uses minimal hardware resources so that memory and processing are available for the VMs it creates. Next thing we have to talk about is the actual virtual machine are the VM. A VM is an emulation of a computer system created by a hypervisor or a VMM. Virtual machines are based on computer architectures and provide the functionality of a physical computer. Their implementations may involve specialized hardware, software, or a combination of both. A VM uses the virtual machine manager slash hypervisor for access to memory, CPU, the network, video, and other resources. And then we have to talk about emulation. An emulator is hardware or software that enables one computer system, the host, to behave like another computer system, the guest. An emulator typically enables the host system to run software or use peripheral devices designed for the guest system. Emulation refers to the ability of a computer program in an electronic device to emulate or imitate another program or device. Now, when it comes to running multiple operating systems on one computer, there are two ways this can be achieved by way of virtualization or emulation. Let's talk about the purpose of virtual machines. So the main purpose of virtual machines is to allow for computers to operate multiple operating systems at the same time from the same piece of hardware. Without virtualization, operating multiple systems like Windows and Linux would require multiple physical units. Operating virtual machines saves tons of money that it will cost to run multiple physical machines as it relates to the cost associated with physical space to store the devices, cooling and peripheral hardware costs. Another benefit of virtual machines is the ability to run older operating systems without having to change computers and without having to reboot their systems. Also, virtual machines allow for single computers to run 32-bit and 64-bit versions of the same operating system so that applications that run better in 32-bit mode can be run without the need for a separate computer. Ultimately, virtual machines can perform multiple tasks at the same time and allow for more work to be done on a single physical machine while saving money on physical hardware investments. Let's talk about the resource requirements. So the resource requirements for virtualization include the following. You're going to need fast multi-core processors, a lot of RAM, the more memory, the better due to the limitations of a motherboard and the virtual machine manager that's actually running this thing. And you're going to need to have preferred use of 64-bit processors and 64-bit compatible VMM that is not subjected to the four gigabits worth of RAM limit that is set by the 32 bit architecture. Also, you're going to need hardware assisted virtualization processors. The BIOS and the UEFI firmware should support this feature as well, and it must be enabled in the system BIOS UEFI. If not, this might cause the VMs to run very slow. Also, some virtual machine managers might not be supported. And then you're going to want two or more displays if several VMs are going to be run at the same time. And also, even though the VM is created using an actual operating system, rather than a reproduction copy. The physical hardware used for the VMM must meet or exceed the minimum requirements for the actual VMM or the virtual machine manager. 
emulator requirements. So due to emulators having to simulate an entire operating system, in addition to the hardware used with the operating system, the emulator requirements for virtualization include more RAM than the original hardware that's being emulated and faster processors than the original hardware that's also being emulated. Let's talk about some security requirements. So even though virtual machines are essentially computers inside of computers, virtual machines still need to be treated like actual physical computers in terms of securing the virtual device. The security requirements for virtualization include network traffic monitoring. Hypervisors must monitor the network traffic of multiple VMs running on a single computer or server. An extensible switch module is a feature that enables operating systems to monitor this traffic. They're going to need to do some updates and patches. Antivirus software is going to need to be installed, updated, patched, and kept current because the host machine cannot scan the VM for viruses. You're going to want to back up the VM. Virtualized storage needs to be backed up with tools made for VMs. These backups need to include the virtual machines, configuration files, and virtual disks to allow for the VM to be restored if needed. Virtual machine checkpoints, which are also known as virtual machine snapshots, are typically included in most VMMs and hypervisors, and they save the current state, data, and hardware configurations of the VM while it is running. They're going to need some type of security on this thing. Virtual machine managers that allow for sandboxing or isolation of individual VMs offer better security against attacks. And then some other recommendations are the use of firewalls, anti-malware, remote administration by using secured VPNs should also be implemented. Also connections between VMs such as clipboards or file sharing should also be limited. Let's talk about some network requirements. So once again, due to virtual machines being computers inside of computers, in order for a VM or the guest to communicate like the physical computer, the host machine, a virtual machine manager must have a network adapter that is bridged or connected to the network adapter of the physical machine. The virtual machine's virtual NIC must also have a MAC address and IP address assigned to it by an administrator to allow for a network communication. The use of authentication servers can also be used to determine, verify, or deny credentials to a user attempting to log into a secured network. Let's go over a hypervisor real quick. So a hypervisor, which is also known as a virtual machine manager or virtual machine monitor. This is a computer software, firmware or hardware that creates and runs virtual machines. A computer on which a hypervisor runs one or more virtual machines is called a host machine and each virtual machine is called a guest machine. A virtual machine is a software emulation of the hardware in a working computer. The virtual machine manager sets up an emulated motherboard chipset, USB controllers, hard disk host adapters, video cards, and other components of an actual computer as a part of the virtual machine, along with setting aside either an expandable or fixed amount of hard disk space. After a hypervisor creates and configures a virtual machine, you install the operating system and the apps desired into the VM to have a working emulated computer or virtual machine. The hypervisor is used to start the virtual machine and depending on the RAM, processor speed and features and available hard disk space in the physical computer, the hypervisor can run several VMs at the same time. Now, there are two types of hypervisors. You have a type one hypervisor. So a virtual machine manager that works directly with the host computer hardware rather than being installed inside of an existing operating system is called a type one hypervisor. And type one hypervisors, they are often referred to as bare metal hypervisors. And then you have a type two hypervisor. This is a virtual machine manager that runs inside of an operating system and carves out RAM and disk space from an all already running system. And here is a pretty little graphic showing you the differences between a type one hypervisor and a type two hypervisor. So if we come on over to the type one hypervisor, you see we have the hardware. As soon as you turn the computer on, it boots straight into the hypervisor. And then from there, you can go into setting up the VMs or the guest operating systems. Type two, you turn the machine on, it goes into your normal operating system. And then you have to turn on the actual hypervisor, which will then allow for you to create the VMs or the guest operating systems. So that is the difference.
Now, with a Type 2 hypervisor, guests are only one level removed from the hardware and therefore run less efficiently than guests on a Type 1 hypervisor. Now, to turn a hypervisor on or off, you have a few options. You can search for Turn Windows Feature On or Off or you can access the Windows features via the control panel, programs, programs and features. Then you're going to select the turn Windows features on and off from the menu. And it's going to look like this little picture down below. All right. So now let's go ahead and do some of this wonderful check on learning, shall we? The first question is, in virtualization technology, a software program that manages multiple operating systems on a single computer is called what? A hypervisor? A virtual switch, a host machine, or a virtual machine. So in virtualization technology, a software program that manages multiple operating systems on a single computer system is called what? The correct answer is a, a hypervisor. Next question. Which of the following virtual technologies make it possible to run multiple desktops without requiring the purchase of expensive hardware for each machine? Is it a virtual machine, virtual applications, software as a service, or emulators? So which of the following virtual technologies make it possible to run multiple desktops without requiring the purchase of expensive hardware for each machine? The correct answer is uh, a virtual machine. Ooh. And the final question is, which hypervisor works directly with the host computer hardware rather than being installed inside of an existing operating system? Is it type one, type two, type three, or type four? So which hypervisor works directly with the host computer hardware rather than being installed inside of an existing operating system? The correct answer is a type one hypervisor, which is also known as a bare metal hypervisor. All right. So in summary, we have talked about the purpose of virtual machines, resource requirements, emulator security and network requirements. And we've talked about the differences between a type one and a type two hypervisor. Now, if you felt like you got something valuable from this information, go ahead and hit the like button, the share button, drop a comment, but most importantly, hit the subscribe button. Also go check out my website, Technology G, so that you can get read up on the latest and greatest to help you successfully pass the CompTIA 220 1001 examination. And until next video, ladies and gentlemen, peace.